Okay. Hello? So, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm involved with CentOS, and CentOS is very good. <laughs> About myself, um, um, I'm a self-employed consultant, and I've worked with Linux for a long year, a long time, like something like 10 years or something. And uh, well, I came up with the idea of the presentation, right? Yes. So. So uh, yes, I was also in this presentation, just signing up without telling me. <laughs> 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 so I had to pack up something. Uh, to me. Girlfriend. Speaker, I 
sorry, I forgot to mention it's the second time I speaker here, and you can ask for the sound. And um, yeah, I've sort of started to work engineering in like the last three days or whatever. But um, other than anything else, it's pretty much protocol one. The acceleration, the buttons, actually anything except the speaker, we know how they kind of do it. Um, and of course, there are four main apps or libraries or whatever, but the first, actually everything about the internet. There is no real maintained library, source, program, where actually some guy actually responds to you with a decent time or whatever. Um, the first two, um, yeah. uh, VGM, VND, and TVID. The first one's Python, and uh, we'll demonstrate the program. The whole stack is written in Python. Uh, quite nice, it's got some play bits, but that's unmaintained. And uh, Matt and Lee got it in reply. I sent an email, he didn't reply. So, I don't know what happened to it. Um, TVID, we're going to demonstrate that too. That's quite complete, quite complex in some bits, with parsing and specs and whatever. But um, that's quite complete, doesn't do, some, doesn't do sound. And that's what we hacked up for our presentation tool, we're going to demonstrate. Then there are two libraries, there's libremote and libu, um, we use. Both of them are fairly similar, it's just a library from C included and you can program it. It's really simple, I mean, if you've done first, uh, my university first lesson in C, you can do it properly. Um, yes, that's about Linux, and as soon as you've got Bluetooth and a Wii, you can start hacking it, basically. Ah. So, um, we were at, actually at Linux Talk, we met for the first time. And um, I had this idea to create something with the remote. And uh, the thing was, I bought a device. It was a device that cost me 15 euros, so it was actually quite cheap. But it was a normal Bluetooth device, but the input functions, there was no driver for it for Linux. Um, I posted on the XORG mailing list. I, I made a bug fix, uh, a bug report, and uh, asked people, well, I can, I can send you two of these devices if anyone wants to reverse engineer the protocol, but nobody accepted the offer. So I was thinking, what can I use for giving presentations? Because I don't want to go to my laptop every time to, to advance the next slide. So I thought, why not just try it with the remote? And it actually has some nice features that you can use. Well, it's cheap. And a lot of people already have one. So they can, it's, it's available everywhere. Uh, even 40 euro is quite cheap because there are uh, Bluetooth devices or other devices that have a dongle that, um, that costs 100 or even 200 euros and can do less than, than, than what, the, what the remote can do. So the remote is, is very interesting. It has a known interface. Well, it's reverse engineered, but, engineered, but you, can, you can use the device while with some other devices you buy, you may not get it to work with Linux. Um, it can rumble, which is interesting to, to use for presentations. It makes you look cool, right? Uh, it makes you look cool, especially if you something like this. Um, it's easy to use. Um, because it fits in your hand. Some of the devices, I, well, the one I bought was actually PCMCIA form factor, so you could put it in your laptop and carry it with you. You always have it with you. But, uh, well, it's not very easy to, to use, and if you have to use it for, for an hour or keep it in your hand for an hour, you have to also look for the buttons because they're they are on, on top of it and you, you don't feel them really. So in this case, it's much, much easier. Um, it's also reliable. At Linux Stack, we were testing it. I hacked a version which did some things, I'm going to demonstrate that. Um, and I walked around during the exhibition hall, which is very large, the, the, the main one. Um, and even 200 or 300 meters from, from my machine, I was still controlling my system, even though there were lots of other devices and a lot of Bluetooth devices in between, it still worked reliably. So that's very important for something like this. I hope nobody brought this remote because they can <laughs> they, can, <laughs> they can make the demonstration go very bad. But we, are, we also have ideas to, to make that much easier. Um, we already started the project um, because uh, Geert already started to implement something with one of the libraries. We thought about WePress, which is a nice name for we presentation, of course. So, um, the things we already do is, well, we advance through the, the presentation. Um, we can control the computer. We can move the mouse, if, both with infrared or with tilting. Um, the LEDs and the rumble we use for time indication. You have four LEDs, so you can use 
Every let could be, if your presentation is 45 minutes, every let would be about 10 minutes and a bit. Um, so you could then see how much time you have left without anyone ask, well, telling you. Um, it could also rumble to tell you you have only 30 minutes left, 50 minutes le left. I don't think any of the, the devices you can buy can do this. So that's also nice. It doesn't disturb anybody, but you know how much time you have left. Um, and there are some other useful stuff that you can do that everybody needs during presentations to, to make sure that it works very well. So <laughs> let's, let's do the demonstration. Are you going to? Sorry. Four. Well, this is actually a program that demonstrates all the things you can do with it. I don't know, does it come with one of the libraries or is it standalone? Yeah, it's, it's PM GUI. It's, it's stand, standalone. So, um, first we have to connect. Let me see if I enabled everything. Yeah. We have to connect. Okay. Yes, but somebody else, they don't know when I pressed it. They didn't do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. So, how am I going to do this? Can I scream? Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Good. Ah, okay. Another thing, there are loads of extensions for this Wii. Yeah? There's a little port in the bottom, and you can plug in a nut chuck, you can, there's a steering wheel, there's a gun, there's loads of stuff you can plug into the bottom. Huh? So this is the official like, Nintendo nut chuck it's used for boxing or whatever. And a little bit to like, the sensor data now. Huh? So if you look in the top left hand, you see the button that should light up. Ah, they light up. You see? So I'm pressing the buttons, and they show us I'm pressing them up. <laughs> uh, not very nice. No, it's not impressive, but OK, it's Bluetooth, huh? It's bend the acceleration. Do you see the bars? When I, oh, wait. Yeah. That Bluetooth yeah, the blue is sort of slow. But I, <laughs> I shake this thing, and you see the acceleration sensors go berserk. So, and it's X, Y, Z, so if I keep doing this in a presentation, for example, they can detect it. If we see, you see the, yes. you can see uh, uh, <laughs> one going more out than the others. Uh, then the next box is the infrared sensor. And basically the official uh, Nintendo one has four infrared LEDs on each side. So you have four here, four here. And the idea is that through this you can detect where the user is basically standing, because of course, if I look at this, the right one, or from left, from your side, will be, be bigger than the left one, uh, than the right one from your side. So the the Wii, because it's got a camera here and it detects the light that's emitted from the LEDs, it can detect where the user is standing, how far is away, because it's two lights. The distance of the two lights determines how far the user is away. So he knows, is it right in front of him? Is he right at the back? Is he standing here or here? And he can do all this. And you can see the infrared, because I've been jumping around all the time, you can see the dots here. Yes. Yeah. Those are the LEDs. And if I go right to the, I don't know if it's still strong enough, you can, should see that they become smaller, the distance. There's some intelligent mathematical stuff in here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> this is not easy. And the same as with the nut shot. Ah, and then, in the middle, you see the pitch and the roll, so the two values. And you have the same as the nut chuck. You have, that. you have the acceleration sensor. You have the, you have the little, <coughs> can you see in the bottom left, can you see the circle with the dot in it? You can see I move it with the controller. So it's dynamic, so if I twist a little bit, it'll, the dot will move a little bit. You have the two buttons, and you have tilt again so you know how the user is holding it. For example, in the Wii Boxing, it actually determines like a block and it actually determines how you hold it through the tilt. And this has acceleration too, the same, same chip as in here. And then you have the classic controller, and this is the old Nintendo thing where they built stuff into it too, with the two controllers, like three game, I don't know, GameCube, I think it was yeah. called. Um, Yes, so this is just that overview of all the sensors this thing has. Now, we, now the whole thing has output capabilities. Eh? It has loads of input for the computer, <coughs> but you can actually, what's interesting for us is actually just moving the mouse, a few buttons for the presentation, but actually we want stuff to come to us. Eh? So if that sets an LED, you see, LED, can you make it blink? One. Control one. Okay. 
Because you can control the LEDs here um, to actually display stuff. And you can make, can make it rumble. But you can't see this, but wait, is it rumbling? <laughs> yes. You see? So. <laughs> it actually is a feelable like, rumble. And you can do funny stuff with that. And yeah. also, you can read out how much battery you have left, which oh. is also interesting to know during the presentation if your battery is running out before it actually runs out. So you could use that as well. Yeah. So. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we go into the memory. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I'm going to restart uh, the Bluetooth because it was slower. Yeah. On my so, computer, it's instant. Yeah, on but my computer, it's because press, we've, it's instant. It's because we have been hacking with it, with the Python stuff. So. Um, OK, so I hacked the WMD, which is unmaintained, but I just changed the program to use different buttons. And I also, inside the program, changed some other char characteristics of the device. Normally, it automatically, I think it was, no, it was not this one. It was this one that I used. Um, I already hard-coded the MAC address. Normally, you can also detect it, but I prefer to hard-code the MAC address so nobody can fool around while I'm trying to synchronize. So this is a way to also do it with the presentation tool. We, you can always give the MAC address to make sure that nobody else can interfere with it. So you can change the MAC address, by the way. Um, <laughs> can, can, can you change it? For, is it also in the EEPROM? Well, you can just slap it, yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> so I'm actually wondering, it didn't find it. It pressed too soon. But the WMD is not that, that uh, can I interrupt it? No. Know, uh, that's wrong. So you see there's not really one like nice hmm. packet that can do everything. It seems to me some kid went off and said, OK, I got a Wii. Let's code for two weeks. They coded for two weeks, loads of bugs, and now they say, oh, I've moved on to other projects, I've had a time. There's no real like Wii developer community. There are three people that tried to port uh, Linux on the Wii, that you run Linux on the Wii. That sort of works. But um, there's not real a Wii controller developer community. So there's not this whole, and I want to get in the normal community thing. There's lots of s different people coding different stuff and just saying, oh, look, it can, I don't know, I've switched buttons or something. The problem in this case is that you first have to start a program and then press the button because I don't know exactly why it uh, doesn't find it after that. We had a problem when we were... Because you put the blue back in, huh? But that's not the one. Actually, let's show you how you can debug this. So you have <laughs> HCI tool. <laughs> you can do scan and none of them are blinking now, only yours is. Um, and I still find three. So, and it's a 70. So he's got Wii's. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's the. We're connecting, so okay, it's yours. It's, it's the blue one. It's the blue one. Okay, you, you demonstrate it. You can press left and right on the, on the arrows. So now, now we come to the interesting bit. Right? Yes, yes, this is the interesting now, bit. So, so I'm giving a presentation. <laughs> Normally in a presentation, or the device I had was an infrared thing, it was a pen, it was very unnatural, I had to press it like this, it didn't work, battery went flat, horrible thing. Here, whoop, I can stand there, I want, and I can... Go outside, go I, outside. I can, I can. <laughs> 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 I, it's flexible, huh? It's Bluetooth, it's wireless, it's normal battery. You buy them in every supermarket. And it fits with the color of your shirt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but how cool this fact is. It's better than an iPhone. Come on, I mean. <laughs> Who needs an iPhone when you can have this? So if you go to the presentation. So I go to the presentation. Then you can do the A is for getting forward. But you don't go forward because that's the next. You can also backward is the B. It's below. But that's actually not good. While I just went up. I just yeah. <laughs> well, giving my lecture, and I can do blah 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 blah, and oh no, no, I wanted to talk about this, oh no, it's on the other screen, oh sorry, yes, okay. So, it's totally flexible, huh? But the B button is not that good because you, you press it accidentally while doing presentations, and you don't notice, but everybody's looking weird, and then you think, oh no, 
So we should change it. We should not use that for. <laughs> um, I was doing the presentation uh, my, uh, my ex work and so we used this infrared trapping. Um, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> like it did in my presentation. I tried to move the window, it didn't work. There was it's also very, very uh, well inconvenient because when you're walking around, you have it in your hand to give a presentation, but they're all infrared sources here. All the lights here are infrared sources. So you see the mouse going up and down during the presentation. It's very, people are very distracted by that. So that's something, that's why we decided not to do it and it doesn't even work now. I, I can't even get the mouse to move, huh? <laughs> it was useless. I was standing there and my boss was looking at me and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so that's like a what was that WMD, wasn't it? Yes, yes, and normally I mapped those two buttons, the plus and the minus, for the left and the mouse button. So you could actually move, uh, uh, but it's very inconvenient to get it correctly because, yeah. Also, if you go out of range, then the mouse is still at that location, but it, uh, yeah, you cannot get it easily back, and it's, it's very inconvenient. So I was very surprised when. Uh, he showed me his new version, which was written in C using the CWIID library. And, well, it's, in this case, it's still called VM, WM input. Um, you need a Wii? You need one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy, huh? If you forget your Wii, you just learn one from your mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now, this is the tilt thing I was talking about. After this experience, I sort of gave up and said this is stupid. So with a tilt sensor, it's far more easy. If I move, wait, can we see the mouse? There's a, can everyone see the mouse? Yeah. If I move the Wii like this, the mouse goes over. If I move the Wii like this, it goes on the other side. If I move the Wii up. And the faster you tilt, also the faster exactly, you move. What the god. <laughs> <laughs> So basically now, if I really have to, it's a little bit, you have to get used to it. <laughs> but now I can take the window, hopefully, if I can calibrate it somewhat. No, I can't. And I can move the window. <laughs> with actually, woohoo! <laughs> so now my boss is happy, eh? Also because I'm, I have a range problem with, with moving the infrared. I cannot go outside of the screen because, yeah, then I'm outside of the range of my infrared. You can tweak it a little bit to make it better, but you always have the problem if you go too far. It's like a mouse, you know, when you're reaching too far, then. So with this, you don't have that problem. You can mark stuff if you want. I thought about having like a minimal programming language that would be able to program <laughs> and you actually program with your emote in your head. Did, uh, didn't you program a bit of the code with doing yeah. this? Yeah, okay. That's why it looks shit. <laughs> the, the windows, the windows, you know, all tab? You always just do the boom, boom. I actually did it with the Wii mode at some stage. Um, yes, and then this, it gets better. The <laughs> so then uh, Dad came up with this idea of having the LEDs um, split. And now I'm going to give it to someone neutral. <laughs> he's from the organization. Eh? He's from the organization. He wants the presentations to be good, so you have to give it to <laughs> someone else. He's involved. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, this is a 20 second presentation now. Very quick, huh? uh, but for demonstration purposes, I think this is enough. So put it in discovery mode. Hopefully, it will find this week. No one needs the audience check. That's a little bit painful, but you can get around it through hard coding MAC address of the Wii. But because I've got and the Wii... And I you need to have the right Wii if you have... So now, it. can you see the four LEDs? Great. Three LEDs. 20 seconds divided by four. Five second intervals, huh? <laughs> it counts down. And every time it counts, it vibrates. So I'm giving my presentation, 20 seconds. I'm standing here, I'm having the Wii here, and I'm just using it to go forward back. But it's vibrating, so I know, ah, another five minutes gone, or another ten minutes, whatever you put the presentation time to be. And it automatically calculates what's delight and what to vibrate. 
Also, now it just shows you four LEDs, but we would, would like to have them blink faster when it's, it's going to disappear. So that gives a nice effect. And then you know a little bit in between how much time you have. So that's, so, that's uh, the next thing to do, right? And this is already usable. I've used this for presentations, though. Yeah, I've sat there and I've looked at it and I'm like, oh, okay, I've got like 10 more minutes to go. And through it vibrating, you get reminded. You know when you get carried away in a presentation, you're just standing there talking, 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 like we are now. And um, you get carried away. You've got no idea. You don't look at your watch. Huh? And because it's vibrating, you're actually just realizing, ah, another interval is gone. Right. So, so yeah. let's go to the IDs we have. Um, what's the thing to move forward? <laughs> <laughs> I have not used this program. Anyway. The secret handshake um, is something that we want to implement to make sure that nobody can fool around and we still have to, haven't, don't have to hard code it. So we could do something like shake it in a certain way and then it would detect which one is, is mine. Um, in, in my office, uh, this was quite some problem because I coded this uh, while I was being at work. Whoa, oh, it's still in. Ah, that's how we make them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically, the idea was that I just did a D, so everyone calls me Giddy, so I do a D to sign on to my program. No one in my office, I, I recorded the graph, you can plot basically the acceleration data. No one in my office managed to nearly get close to what I did, because everyone sort of does a D, whoa, like this, or, but no one does it like I did. So in a way, just doing a simple letter or just doing something natural to you is very hard for someone else to imitate, it's like your handwriting. Have you ever tried? Copy someone's handwriting? <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> 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 this is confidence, right? <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, so that's basically the idea. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of work because you have to have some KI and stuff. But I think with fuzzy logic, you can easily implement it. The WeFit? I think it's a little bit silly. That's cool. <laughs> 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 okay, the WeFit is. Balance board, you've got one, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. The balance board has got four sensors in it, but it's got pressure sensors. It's got. <laughs> okay, I, I'm moving too much. I'm going to take another wee in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the cool style. <laughs> um, the balance board, they've got technical to it. We don't have a slide on this. It's a weight sensor, it's got four pressure sensors, it's got one LED, and it's a new thing from Nintendo. So it can weigh you, and it can see how you've got your weight balance. So if you stand on it and you do this, it will realize, ah, those two sensors have more power now, or even double the weight, so it actually will find out how you're standing. And there is no limit thing for this. I looked for it, you yeah, totally have to reverse engineer it again. Or, yeah, yeah, you have to reverse engineer it, I suppose. But it would be cool, just imagine you're giving a presentation, it's just hang on, you're just doing this. <laughs> 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 or something like that. Or you can use it, I don't know, as a touchpad. You just do BASH! <laughs> and we'll go to the next level. Your students, too, you don't know, have hitting competitions or whatever you want. I mean, but um, I, I have had some time to reverse engineer that. Um, I don't have one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, a movement to advance, so you could do something like... Well, it's actually something like a multi-touch, yeah? So explain it. <laughs> okay, I've got quite a few ideas here. <laughs> One implementation was next slide, previous slide, <laughs> useless. <laughs> How I give a presentation, I give a presentation with my hand. My slides were flicking around. <laughs> I was going, hey, next slide. <laughs> So maybe a little bit more research into like how the acceleration goes and stuff, because I just said if it's over a threshold and acceleration goes the next slide. But if you would have like a, you get a nice curve sort of thing. So if you would actually be able to analyze this, you could actually do, okay, if I really do this, it will go to the next slide or do this or whatever you want. Then I had an idea, because we have the infrared sensor, we could get, as soon as we have little infrared emitters, you put one on your finger and just do this. <laughs> because we've got the infrared camera, we know we can detect infrared points. And if we have the strongest infrared point, the infrared energy is one euro something, a decent one. So you could just stick it to your finger or have a little pen or I don't know, stick reflectors to it and get it to shine or whatever. You could just do this. And if you have two, you could do combinations. <laughs> <laughs> How cool would that be? You're giving a presentation and you just like, take a window because you've got like 
<laughs> you take the and you move it off the screen. <laughs> it doesn't matter, I'm standing here. Next slide. <laughs> Minority Report style, you know? <laughs> and because it's easy, actually you just need a little infrared, two, one, whatever, detects the motion, and that's it. And if you've got your hand like this, the Wii will not detect it. And it's a very good camera, so you just do whoop, whoo. <laughs> So you can do, and it's really easy to do. I mean, I don't know how many hours I've spent on this, but <laughs> you, you can, it's quite easy to implement them. Um, you can do multi-touch, you could stand here to zoom in. <laughs> Just with two LEDs, zoom out, huh? stuff like that. Yeah, the sounds. I don't know what we can use the sounds for, but I had the problem <laughs> when I gave the uh, presentation, Argentina, I was also using the device, but uh, I put my, a uh, laptop in, in the power plug, but it apparently was you had to push it very hard to get power. So halfway the presentation, suddenly my laptop hibernated. Now the problem was I always put my sound down. So what it could do, the, the presentation too, could automatically put the sound in the highest uh, volume setting or something. So that at least you hear something like this. This is something simple that most people won't use, but if it happens to you like it did to me, then it's probably useful. And you could play the sound through the through the microphone or. I don't know, you could have a countdown, you know, exactly. like, and five, four, three, two, one, and then it's over or something. The that sound is quite difficult to reverse engineer. I've spent quite some time on it, and the Nintendo doesn't tell you anything, and it's like, I just throw bits at it, and at some stage I get a decent sound, so I just say, okay, this is it. And so I got a little whoop, just through default. I've got no idea how they encode it. It's really weird. It's no major standard. Maybe they just reversed it, just <laughs> me off. I don't know. <laughs> uh, if someone knows someone at Nintendo, maybe. Yeah. Um, local positioning system. Oh, that's something that you... Something I came up. Because of the Bluetooth device, I know how strong the signal is. I'm, the computer, in a circular motion, of course, knows how far I'm away. Quite accurately, actually. Because I used to use my mobile phone when I worked out of my office to lock my computer. So I had the Bluetooth on. My computer kept pinging my phone over Bluetooth. If I was out of range, say my office door was a range, my computer locked. I walked back in, my computer unlocked. Um, so I thought, we could use this with the Wii, and the Bluetooth on the Wii is far more accurate than my Nokia or whatever Bluetooth. So I could actually detect, and if I know the layout of the room, I know this is a circle, I have to stand here, there. So you can actually position quite how much you've moved around, just through the like diameters, so you can actually then have, I walk two miles in my presentation. <laughs> because even if I walk around here, it will change. And I know in a circular motion where I should be, it's like, well, you can do triangular, but if you have another Bluetooth device, maybe you could track it through triangular. Stuff like that, I mean. And how is that useful? I just want to walk around that like, <laughs> or where I am, I mean. <laughs> I put a question mark, so. <laughs> so. That's also an idea of yours. <laughs> okay, um, involve the audience. I'm hoping at some stage everyone has a device like this. <laughs> really? I mean, it's 40 euros. And you can have so much fun with it. I mean, I've spent hours just sitting in front of my computer. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> or you got these touch bracelet or these racing games. Just imagine, I used to have a controller. I was standing in front of touch bracelet. Woo! <laughs> it works. It's easy. Because it's a mouse, smack it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been using colored ones. <laughs> How do I get rid of this? So, okay. So basically, if you come to give a presentation and loads of people have one of these, you could do hand raising. Someone could say, me, and press a button. And then the sound's gonna go off? And the sound's gonna go off. And, so that's, you know, and you know the distance of where he is? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm giving a lecture to my students and someone in the back row starts, <laughs> I know it's in the back row. Um, yes, so you can hand raise. You can say, okay, I have a question. Up. And so you get a little modification. One or two of them stand some stage. It's easy to press a button and put your hand up, wait till I notice it, and say, woohoo. Uh, voting. This is not as easy to implement because one Bluetooth device only has four Wii's connected to it. So you need an array of Bluetooth devices. You get a USB hub, you just get loads of USB different devices, you can do it. I think, I don't know, I'm not the terminal to support. So if it's your vote, you can say, how was my lecture? Press A or B. 
You could rumble all the, the vote to, to make them aware that they have they can vote. If they are asleep because it's your presentation, they're all asleep. <laughs> you can wake them. You can rumble, you can shine LEDs, you can tell everyone how long the presentation is going to last. Huh? <laughs> so if you can get, get sign up for, I was thinking for people that don't hear very good, a lecture room like this. Just get a wee, hold it to your ear, and off you go. Simultaneous translation. Exactly. So you see, we're, we're coming up with ideas. <laughs> um, locking your computer, that's what I just told you. You can do this with the Wii. Uh, if you, if you, the, the audience is so upset with you that you have to run out, and, out of the audience. You can lock your computer while running out. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Then disable screensaver because in every yeah. presentation the screensaver comes up and then you have to go and type your password and then you have to pull something down and got a full screen or whatever. And enable sound. Actually, there's a two shots a month. Um, <coughs> disable screen save. We don't know about that because it depends on KDE, GNOME, whatever you right. use. Enable sound is alpha comp minus whatever hundred. So please, if you have ideas. <laughs> okay, the future of this genius project. <laughs> we have to start it because for now everything is a huge hack. I just took stuff from there, took stuff from there, put it all together, and at some stage I got this motion thing going. And basically, we have to start a proper project huh? with people that, are that really want to contribute, not some student that goes off and says, oh, look, I bought the Wii, let's spend two weeks doing something. Actually, people that reply to emails that fix bugs, you know, a proper project. Find people. <laughs> Might be a help. Something we don't know yet. And proper. Um, yes. Like <laughs> <laughs> we only do it for the profit. We do it for fun. No. And profit, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, some project details. I started a Google Code project, we pre. Um, our email addresses are on there. Please join. I mean, we've got some subversion stuff up there, but the presentation thing I demonstrated here is up there. Um, VFD, the unmaintained source, I don't even think the web page answers. <laughs> I think we can serve it down. CVID says that the web page I have no time, I have other stuff to do. But interesting, you play around, it's got like crunchy tools. And we use is a very nice library. And actually, I'm thinking of porting like the stuff I've done to we use if I find some time. But it's a very nice written library, it's loads of comments. This is actually the nicest thing I've seen in the Weave community sort of thing. Because even for a beginner, it's very, very easy to understand. <laughs> so, now it's your turn. <laughs> speak, speak in this monstrous microphone. <laughs> Some ideas, comments, maybe? We should um, disable the Weave. Yeah, you still you still have the mouse going around, so yeah, that's probably a very good idea. Do you own a Wii or own a Wii mode? I own a Wii, but it's yeah, my girlfriend's place. That lives in Berlin, <laughs> <laughs> so. You don't have any remote to that, right? Uh, actually not. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I need all of them for here. <laughs> but no, um, I don't have that thing. I'm actually okay like two minutes on it. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing is you, you don't have to buy a Wii to get a remote, of course. And also the infrared bar, this one is not even from Nintendo. It's wireless, so you don't need to get the power from the Wii. So also that is, is available for a cheap price. I think it was 10 euros or something, or 15 euros. That's one of the main points for the whole presentation thing. I mean, sure, I bought a thing from Logitech, or no, not Logitech, from American company for 170 euros. And it had two buttons, a little battery, and I could had a time, had a time. Huh? took so the time. And that was it, and it was infrared, so I always had to point at a fucking little spot. <laughs> <laughs> I got so annoyed with that thing, really. I got, ah, oh. and then Dak went on with the Wii, and it's so easy, because you just walk around with it. Yeah, literally, it's Bluetooth, huh? 
So he's still he's, he's still very excited about the idea <laughs> since Linux talk. So and then he blames me for the. He signed up. I I had already something, but it didn't do what I wanted. Okay. Uh, other ideas, please. Come on. There's um there's a video on YouTube that shows using it for like a whiteboard. Yeah. Have you looked into that? Because I mean that's interesting yes. for a school. Yes. It's true. Um, we we sort of focus on the presentation side of it. Yeah. But. Basically, this infrared, everything with an infrared is very interesting with that. And everything that emits infrared you can use, you can detect with the Wii with the camera. So infrared, what we used to build with webcams, I don't know, 10 years ago, you can do that with a Wii. Um, but yes, you can do, he's got loads of stuff on there. He's got like whiteboard, he's got like a multi-touch interface too, I think. He's done, he's done the head tracking. Yes. If we wanted to display a cool effect that you have actually 3D head tracking. We can still do it. Eh? If there's some time, I don't know how much time we have. We've got to do it. 15 minutes, okay. But it's on the other laptop. Um, for the project to advance, we need two things. We need a library that can do all the things we need, like sound and stuff like that, that is maintained. So maybe we have to talk again to the authors of the different libraries to see if they are interested to, to do it. And we have to create a program. I want an out of the box program. So all the things like the, the infrared, it's probably good as a separate program, but it doesn't fit into. The, the, the only thing it needs to be good for, it's doing the presentations. Um, I want this program to be in Python. So the second program from Geert is in, in C, because then it could do the things he wanted to do, because none of the Python libraries could do, I think, the rumbling thing and the let's. Yeah. Uh, what, what did the Python can it can't rumble and yeah, it's right. quite... And the Python interface is not, not very clean. So we probably need to create a library that, that can do that and it is also accessible from Python. And I want the Python tool so that people can also easily modify it. So uh, those two things we probably need to, need to make. Um, But we, you can also you can already use both programs. I mean, for just doing the presentations, you saw all the functionality is there. You might want to tweak it a little bit or disable the the infrared. Um, uh, have you been thinking of uh, synchronizing your work with? Uh, I think in the Mac community there are some projects for uh, using mobile phones for similar similar things because a lot of high-end mobile phones also have uh, motion sensors, Bluetooth buttons obviously and so forth. But right. they also have a screen. Right. So I've, I've seen mobile phones being used for similar presentation purposes and the advantage of course is that mobile phone you already have with you anyway. You don't have to remember right. to take your right. My mobile phone can, can also do presentations and you have a cable that you can connect to the computer so that you also can feed the, the slides from the mobile phone. But a mobile phone is really not really useful to do because you have so many buttons and it's easy to mispress a button or something like that. Um, but it could be useful, yeah. It could be useful. I, I don't know if it fits with this because maybe we could add it, yes, as a feature. So he dislikes Compass and Gnome and... <laughs> you don't need it. Literally, you never use it. Um, Sorry. Okay, for the head tracking. Uh, Is the ownership of the U input device... Uh, Thank you very much, I forgot that. Oh, my password. <laughs> 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 no, no. I'm going to change it now. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to change anyway. Um, you can do that from my laptop if you want. You want to do it from my laptop? Change it and then... Uh, so, CD. Who did that? <laughs> 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 oh, 
Okay. Um, so we need minus pi uh, six hundred with eight hundred. Ah, what? So, Press button one and two on your Wii mode. Uh, take this one. Take this one. Ah, okay. So, have it. so is Press one of the two, please. So basically, the idea is that I've got this thing attached to my head, <laughs> and it doesn't work. Is it mine that is connecting? Because uh, is this one? So, oh, okay. okay. So the thing is, can you all see it? Yeah. So the thing is, I attach this to my head, mm. and um, yes. through moving. The whole thing moves, and if I move closer to it, well, you see I get a 3D effect. I actually move past objects. So if I actually map this to me and look at it, it actually looks 3D. Yeah. Because it knows where my eyes are, I exactly map this to 3D. So this is one of the effects on Google Video. That Ooh, this would be my head and the screen would be there. So basically, the idea is you put it on top of your on your TV and it actually looks quite funky. It actually does look, I've tried it. It actually is very, very funky. <laughs> and um, The guy has infrared in his glasses, is that so that's even... Uh, I prefer this. <laughs> <laughs> it looks quite stupid, but uh, the 3D experience sort of is quite cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the idea is, or what, what he's talking about, is to have 3D really shooter games. Uh, you get it from goggles or apparently a helmet. Uh, we saw a big picture of a helmet. Uh, and then you can sort of duck and sort of move away from 3D objects. But this, I mean, if someone wants to try it, please come and we'll show you. Uh, I need to access the power. Okay, um, I, can, I can give you, I know it's in use. So, this is one of the things. I mean, quite a few people use this to do parkour stuff. Um, what else? Are you all asleep? Do you all want a weed that <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, so can I see that, huh? 